Okay, now for the sacral hold, uh, as with any clinical skill, we want to make sure to be clear with our patient about uh, where our contacts are going to be made, where we're going to be, be where we're going to be putting our hands, um, and make sure that we uh, sufficiently obtain uh, explicit consent before we proceed. Right? We don't want to just kind of put our hands uh, in random locations without letting our patient know. Uh, so. Just uh, to confirm, you're aware I'm going to be putting my hands kind of on your backside, at the bottom of your spine. Um, also in the position, my arm is going to be kind of in between your legs. Are you okay with that? Okay. All right. So now we have obtained consent um, from, we want to be sitting on uh, one side of our patient. Uh, we, want, we kind of want to be positioned inferiorly to where their pelvis is. Our ultimate goal is for our hand uh, and arm to be positioned um, this way with our fingertips pointing towards uh, the head and we want the sacrum to be cradled along our hand here. So in order to achieve that position, probably the position that's going to uh, allow us to have the best sense of cranial motion in a symmetrical way, uh, we're going to have our patient uh, lift this opposite leg, go ahead and lift that, and then go ahead and lift your hip on that left side. In this position, we're now gonna take our arm or our hand and arm, and we're going to carefully kind of move between uh, their legs and then position on the, on the back side with our fingertips at the base of the sacrum, at the bottom of the spine, and then our palms at the apex of the sacrum. So go ahead and let your hands rest there, good, or let your pelvis rest on my hand and straighten out your leg, perfect. Uh, something else to consider before you uh, get into this position is making sure that your patient is close to the edge of the table so that you're not leaning over too far. So now in this position, um, you would be able to um, best sense cranial motion. If you end up in this position, you could always ask your patient uh, to lift their hips if you need to adjust anything um, or if you need to adjust your hand position. Uh, additionally, you can slide your hand in posteriorly here. So just position your hand here. And you could slide your hand in posteriorly here and monitor the lumbar spine posteriorly. Um, or you can put your hand across the pelvis, across the ASISs to further help you stabilize so that you get as uh, good symmetric motion as possible while you're monitoring. Alternatively, there, there might be some instances where your patient might not be comfortable with this position or where your patient may not have the mobility to lift their own hip or, um, or to position themselves. And this might just be overall just an uncomfortable uh, position for everyone. Um, so instead, um, we can uh, try an alternate position where our hands are, or our hand and arm um, is not uh, between the legs. Um, so to get there, we need to make sure that we're getting out of this position uh, safely. So go ahead and reverse it and lift that leg and lift that hip good. And then you slide away from your patient um, and uh, uh, now you're able to move on to whatever the next technique is that you're going to do. Um, Alternatively, if you're not able to do that, uh, that first uh, position, what you can do is uh, come in from the side. There are some limitations um, to this approach that you'll see momentarily, but uh, go ahead and put your hand here just briefly and then lift um, this knee. And I'm gonna help you kind of lift this hip on this side um, just so that I can slide my hand underneath, okay? Mm -hmm. So you can help lift here. And then again, find the position where you're where your fingertips are near the base of the sacrum and your palm is near the um, apex of the sacrum and go ahead and rest right on my hands. Perfect, so now in this position, ideally I'd want my patient to lower their legs, so go ahead and straighten out this leg. The problem uh, may arise where your patient's leg is now resting on your forearm. If you try to adjust out this way, um, it's now resting kind of on their upper, uh, upper posterior thigh, and that may or may not uh, cause a little bit of asymmetry in your ability to appreciate the sacrum. Now again, in order to assist with uh, maintaining balance, you can put your hand on the lumbar spine here, or, or you can also uh, put your hand across the pelvis on the ASISs to better appreciate um, a balance point where you can appreciate the sacral motion. Go ahead and lift your knee and lift your hip, Good, great. So now, the motions that you would expect to feel, so during cranial flexion, because of the dural attachments between um, the sphenobasilar symphysis and uh, the sacrum, uh, the dural attachments within the sacral canal, we would expect during cranial flexion where tension is increased along the dura 
for the sacrum to um, extend or to rotate posteriorly around a transverse axis. Now, uh, in order to avoid confusion with uh, cranial flexion, extension, sacral flexion, extension, and um, that terminology between biomechanical flexion extension and craniosacral flexion extension, um, the way instead we're going to refer to sacral motion in this case is nutation and counter-nutation. So in this case, we should think of the sacrum as nodding posteriorly. Kind of this is the front of the sacrum and it's nodding posteriorly. So that would be counter-nutation. And then during uh, craniosacral extension or during cranial extension, when the dura is now relaxing and it's not pulling on the sacrum anymore, that sacrum is able to rock anteriorly. Uh, or on a transverse axis, which we will call sacral nutation. Um, so now, uh, in each of those um, uh, positions, we'd be able to appreciate motion. And uh, for the sake of um, uh, monitoring, we also want to try to appreciate the, um, the rhythm and the uh, synchrony between the cranium and the sacrum. And sometimes it might help to have uh, a partner at the other end so that you, you can um, help to appreciate uh, the synchrony emotion on both ends.